Let's find out now as we are now have former World Rugby Athletes and Adventurers, Ron Rutland and Adam Nunn in our studio. Hi guys. Hi, thanks for having us. This is very exciting. Thank you so much for being here. I know you guys are busy because you're in Jakarta, but tomorrow you'll be in somewhere else, right? <laughs> so first up, um, so you travel from one country to another to deliver the 2019 Rugby World Cup whistle. When did you start your journey and what what, what drives you to do so? Like, what why, what made you do this, guys? Oh, I think it's a little bit of a midlife crisis for myself. <laughs> I think for Adam, a bit of a quarter life crisis. But um, I think just to, yeah, just to clarify, in 2019, um, I cycled with another friend from London to Tokyo. The World Cup was in, took place in Japan in 2019, the Rugby World Cup. The first time the Rugby World Cup was in Asia. Yep. So it was a great opportunity to get involved. Um, they, they produce a commemorative whistle for the opening game of the, of the Rugby World Cup. So because we're sponsored by DHL, they said it's a good idea to deliver the whistle. Um, but the primary purpose is to raise money and funds for Child Fund Rugby, the official charity of the World Cup. So I'm teaming up with Adam this time around and we're continuing the journey by cycling from Tokyo to Auckland for the next World Cup taking place in October. So actually, you actually have done this before and you're doing it again. Wow, so that's that good. The journey <laughs> is that good. Why do you want to do it though? Well, this is my first one. Yeah. Um, and like Ron said, a bit of a quarter life crisis. <laughs> and, and it was more just the opportunity to take control of my own life and do something out there. Yeah. And um, yeah, fortunately enough, I met Ron and this opportunity presented itself. I love rugby. I love the charity Child Fund Rugby. I can cycle 100 kilometers a day for yeah. 300 days plus. Um, I have no partner at home. I have no dogs or debt. So, <laughs> so you just, can just leave, right? I can just leave and it all, it all added up and you know, I've never felt more free. Well, well, we can say that they're very um, healthy, I guess. <laughs> but but well, what I want to know, what we want to know is you guys are rugby athletes. So why are you taking this trip by bicycle? Why not a car? Wouldn't it, a car would be easier, right? Uh, well, in some ways it would be easier, but crossing borders, you know, with a car comes with a whole lot of extra complications around yeah. insurance and different licensing and things like that. And the one thing I've discovered is, I mean, we both played rugby. Um, we, neither of us have actually played in the World Cup, you know, but we've, we've loved the game of rugby. It's been a part of our lives. Um, but there's something special about seeing the world by bicycle. You go to pay, there's no noise on a bicycle. You don't need to pay for fuel and there's inflation in the world now. Petrol's expensive. Um, but it's more about the experiences you have in between. So we've been spending the last sort of two or three weeks cycling down Sumatra from Singapore into Java here in Jakarta. And everywhere we go, go through these little towns and villages where people have very rarely seen foreigners. Um, you get to smell everything, you get to hear everything. And it makes you relatable to people. And we like the physical challenge. <laughs> All right. So you're, you, for Indonesia alone, you've been in Sumatra, Java, and next will be um, Bali. Is it? Am I correct? Yeah, we'll cross the, the island of Java all the way to Bali and then Lombok and then um, west and east Nusa and all the way to um, Timor-Leste. Um, okay, yeah. now before I ask you about the challenges, because you know, this kind of journey, I can't even imagine what kind of challenges you face. Yeah. But uh, can we explain it once again to the viewers, what exactly is the whistle? Yeah, so it's considered a great honor mm -hmm. in, in the rugby world, if you're a referee, to be given the opening game of the World Cup. So like okay. football, the, big, the opening game is always involves the host nation, or generally involves the host nation. It's the first event to the tournament, and generally it's the best referee leading up to the tournament will be given at. So what World Rugby have done is actually produced these whistles, mm -hmm. um, and there's a tradition that they present this whistle yeah. um, to the referee who gets appointed for the opening game. And uh, it's just, yeah, I guess the Olympics has the torch. Yeah. Uh, rugby has the, has, the, <laughs> has, the, has the whistle. So we carry it from one stadium, from the previous World Cup to the next World Cup. Um, this is the, actually the third one I've been involved in. Yeah. We're actually cycling to France after, after New Zealand for the fourth one. So it's a tradition that started and um, we do it by bicycle now. And it's kind of linked also to our fundraising efforts. It gives a bit of a symbol to our journey. So it's very special and you guys are the one who gets to do it. Yeah. Now, all right, so let's talk about the challenge. What's the challenge so far in this mission for you both? Um, at first, you know, I think one of these, uh, when you set up for an adventure, you always get people that doubt you and give you all yeah. of the worst um, scenarios. In, in the current world, the pandemic was a, a, a challenge. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we had to really just shut out any negativity and plan as if we go in, no matter what pandemics lurking around yeah. and um, that was a big challenge you know normal visas and normal travel wasn't easy and getting to Japan the start line of our trip was almost a, a 12 month journey yeah. and so wow. the biggest challenge of this whole trip so far although we're only 90 odd days in was getting to the start line yeah. um, 
Yeah, and it's just navigating those sort of negativities where you're like, sorry, you're not going to come here. We, we, we've taken it on ourselves to be a bit more flexible. And, you know, we, if, the, if this road's blocked, we're going to take that road. Right. Um, and it's just, it's all about it being in the mind. You know, you've got to sit up and be positive, be optimistic, and just navigate your route around all the negativity and all the places that have shut us out. Yeah. And so far, so good. We are um, we on schedule. The, the route map that we had planned 12 months ago mm -hmm. had us in Jakarta at this time, so things are looking good. Yeah, I think a lot of people often think about the challenges about the bicycles breaking down or getting sick, you know, or the hot weather, which, you know, we arrived into Vietnam and Thailand in the middle of the hot season, for example. <laughs> um, obviously, rainy season here. Yep. Um, but that becomes so minute in the bigger scheme of things. You know, we've learned, as Adam was talking about, we can't control COVID, we can't control the weather. So those kind of things, we just go with the flow. And if you can't accept difficult weather on a bicycle trip, it's the wrong thing for you. So. Oh, as you say, the challenges are those kind of more logistical things and mental things, but the physical challenges are just day-to-day -day yeah. life. You've got this, right, for physical challenge. Yeah. Well, hopefully the challenge is only in the beginning, and from here on out, it will be smooth sailing. Okay. All right, so what do you think about the development of rugby in the world since not many countries are familiar with the sport? I'm familiar because one of our colleague, Kai, plays rugby, but <laughs> what do you think about that? Well, we come from South Africa, which is obviously a really traditional rugby nation. And growing up, we thought the whole world <laughs> knew what rugby was and was right. excited by rugby. Um, but, you know, so there are core nations, you know, obvious examples, New Zealand, Australia, Western Europe, South Africa. Um, but I lived, a, I spent a lot of time living in, I lived in Thailand and Hong Kong. So I've been lucky enough to see, be at the forefront of, to, I've played rugby in, in, in Jakarta before. Yep. I've played rugby in Vietnam and Cambodia and Laos and, and we've been visiting rugby communities all the way. So although they might, might not have yet have reached the levels mm -hmm. of the South Africa's and the England's of the world from a performance point of view, there's a lot of enthusiasm for the game um, and particularly in the women's game is growing very quickly. Yep. I know Jak in Indonesia's got a very strong women's program. Uh, the Women's World Cup, which we're cycling to now, is, beco is it's becoming more and more of a higher profile event. It's an Olympic sport now. So it really is exciting to see the game growing, and not just from a men's, but from a woman's point of view as well. So you think in Southeast Asia alone, it is growing, there, there's something there, right? Oh, undoubtedly. I mean, I, li I lived here in the early 2000s, 20 years later, it's a different, it's a different level. It's, it's wonderful to see. Well, that's great to hear. Now, other than promote rugby, is there any purpose behind this adventure, other than, you know, <laughs> quarter life crisis? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, ultimately we're raising money for Child Fund Rugby. Okay. It's a sports for development program gives a lot of young children in, in poorer communities the opportunity to learn life skills mm -hmm. um, through, the, through sport and the game of rugby, and particularly women, um, which is you know, quite rewarding, especially us cycling to the Rugby World Cup in 2021, which is the Women's World Cup. Um, and yeah, a lot of our efforts in all the hard days when we look down at our sore legs, we know we're doing it for a bigger <laughs> purpose. And you know, these, a lot of these children have nothing, and for them to just get out of the home for a day or half a day or once a week um, means the world to them and yeah. if whatever cent we can raise to, to, to help support that, get rugby balls, um, facilitate coaching sessions, book out fields, uh, you know, it makes the cycling easy. It makes so, it yeah. worth it, right? All for Child Fund Rugby, yeah. yeah and, and Child Fund Rugby started here in Southeast Asia in Vietnam and Laos and it, it's an amazing program and sport really does have the power to change the world. I mean, whether it's football or basketball or volleyball, but the nice thing with rugby, particularly in this region, is because a lot of, as we talked about just now, there are a lot of people that don't know the game. Um, and you take into communities where it's an unknown sport, mm -hmm. and you tell the ladies and the girls, this is a woman's sport. So it's not just the men saying, oh, get out the way, let us play it. Yeah. So it really is a, an opportunity, using a new sport, it's a great opportunity to get young females involved in sport. Yeah, you know, I've never tried rugby before. I think I should try it one day. <laughs> one day. I mean, in, my head is, in my head is like, I need more protection. <laughs> why, why don't you have protection for my body? But anyways, um, so um, uh, next, I know you're going to Bali and then after Indonesia. I know, um, can you just tell us once again, where are you going? Oh, so through, once we get through Indonesia, after a lot of island hopping and ferry yeah. crossings, uh, we'll get to East Timor. Mm -hmm. And from Delhi, we're going to have to catch a flight. We've been looking for a boat that crosses that ocean um, to Australia. But we'll fly from Delhi to Darwin, Australia. Then we'll cr cross the outback. Okay. Um, for about 30 days, we'll make our way to Brisbane through the desert. Um, so we're going to be very strategic there, make sure we have <laughs> enough water and, and be safe. And once we're in Brisbane, we'll go along the coast all the way to Sydney, where we'll host a, fu a function for Child Fund Rugby. Yeah. And, you know, that whole coastline is very rugby-orientated. So we really want to share the spirit of rugby in a rugby community. 
Um, and yeah, from Sydney, we'll have to fly again and we'll fly and make our way to Invercargill. It's a southern point of New Zealand on the South Island. And we'd want to cycle all the way across New Zealand, all the way past Auckland, turn um, in a town called Whangarei, and then come back down to Auckland to hand the whistle um, to the ref for the opening game, which is South Africa versus France. Yes. And we're very excited for that. Wow, that's, I, I feel like you still have a long way to go. <laughs> come well, on, we've got buddy. thousands of kilometers. <laughs> and, uh, we're, we're almost halfway, 93 days or 94 days into a 209 day journey. Uh, we've done seven or 8,000 kilometers. We've got another seven or eight or 9,000 to go. Three or four more countries to yeah. go. But uh, hopefully you can see it, you know, we've just, we're having the time of our lives. Yes. Um, you know, every day we see, and that's a great thing again. You, every day we see new things, experiencing things. We pull out our rugby ball. We share stories of rugby with young people and yep. older people, and uh, yeah, we just we just get such a buzz and out of it all. It's so exciting just to listen to your journey. All right, so uh, last but not least, what's your wish for rugby? And do you have anything to say to the viewers of C today? Well, my wish is that more people can be exposed to the game of rugby. As we talked about, it's just growing every day. And in our small, tiny way, we try and introduce at least a few people every day to the game of rugby. Yep. Um, so my hope is that it grows. My hope is that. Um, the women's game gets uh, the same respect and coverage as the men's game. And I hope that one day a team from Southeast Asia wins the Olympic medal. A Olympic, it can be a bronze, a gold or silver. Yep. But in my lifetime, that is what I, I would love to see. Um, and yeah, and I hope that South Africa wins the World Cup. <laughs> Amen to that. I, right. I, I think people shouldn't fear rugby. There's positions <laughs> in rugby for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone has this image that it's in the mud. and on the ground scratching but you know there's sevens the sevens rugby which is the olympic circuit yes. there's touch rugby yeah. there's refereeing there's there's a space for every person in the world in the game of rugby yeah. doesn't necessarily mean you have to be at the world's top level at, at a world cup final you can you know really spread your wings and enjoy the game and the community because the community is great whether you yeah. Short, tall, fat, thin, there's a spot for you on that rugby field. So there's a spot for me, guys. All right. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ron and Adam, for being here and telling, you, uh, telling everyone here about your journey. Good luck on your journey yeah. and stay healthy. Yeah. Can we just say thank you to the people of Indonesia? Yes. Everywhere we've gone, we've just been welcomed with open arms. People have stopped their cars and given us Cokes and waters and <laughs> given us food and just made us feel so welcome. So thank you. Thank you.